Happy New Year from our nation's capital, where the Georgetown Hoyas are getting set to take on the great Blue Jays next. Basketball on CBS Sports Network is presented by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. We've got doubleheader action on CBS Sports Network tonight, and it begins here in D.C. as the Hoyas get set to host the Creighton Blue Jays. Hey, everybody, I'm Tom McCarthy along with Steve Lapis. Happy New Year and happy hoop season. The Creighton Blue Jays are 0-2 in the Big East. That tells you how good this conference is. And this Creighton team has some great wins in the non-conference season. But when you play in the Big East, you play Villanova first, then you go to Marquette, you could be 0-2. But what Greg McDermott does not want to happen is them go 0-3. <laughs> Georgetown, on the other hand, a little bit of a honeymoon period if there is one in college basketball this year. All right, let's talk about these Creighton Blue Jays. Beller Shireman, in the training. Transfer. He has been outstanding this season. Well, he's the leading scorer in the Big East. He had seven threes in their last game against Marquette, one of the premier three-point shooters in the country. But he also averages seven and a half rebounds a game. He does a little bit of everything for the Blue Jays. You talked about this being a honeymoon period for Georgetown. Well, it gets a little more difficult tonight because no Jaden Epps out with an ankle injury. Yeah, that's a tough one because he's really been one of the best newcomers in the league. Third leading scorer, tremendous three-point shooter, missing his firepower tonight against Creighton is going to be tough. What kind of a burden does that put on Dontre Styles? Well, this kid hardly played at North Carolina. Now he's averaging 15 points a game, shooting 41% from three. And as Ed Cooley told us before the game, he is a high, high-level athlete. And Ed Cooley has seen mm. and had plenty of high, high-level athletes. He actually put him in the top five of guys he's had over the years. Creighton and Georgetown. Big East basketball on CBS Sports Network. The tip coming up next. What about the three? Cut off, though. Leaves it for Alexander, who got a step on Heath. He's caught underneath. Let's pass out to Ashworth. Shireman for three. It's good. Nothing but net. No, this guy here, as good as you're going to find in the nation, without a doubt, when it comes to making that time, keeping him in front. They go down low to Cockbrenner. Cockbrenner hard off the glass. It's good. They want him to be more aggressive. And what they did there was they got into transition. That was like a semi transition. He went right to the box. That has stepped up in his first half. And so far, there have been any whistles. <laughs> there have not been any whistles. And one thing about Clay, they're number one in the nation at least fouls per game. Ashworth from the corner, steps to his left for three. It's good. He splashes it home in front of the Georgetown bench. And when you're that good a shooter, be right. we used to see him left and right, Tom. I, I don't know if I've seen four charges this year. They were so important when I was uh, coaching middle school basketball. Yeah. I'd give out gift cards if anybody would have a charge. Because now there's no such thing as a help defender right. taking a charge. That's, they've, they've given up three layups like that. Their defense in the head court has been good, but they've given up those three. Bumba and Bristol have had pretty good looks. Ashworth looking for the screen. Crosses over, goes to Cockbrenner. Barabella. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It could have been, but it turned out to be that would be a really good horse shot if you're knocking somebody. <laughs> Point for Georgetown, and the Hoyas are within two. Supreme took the transfer from Fairfield. Third team uh, all max selection last year. You know what's a bizarre stat, Tom, is that uh, Clayton for the season only averaged 11 turnovers a game, but their opponents average seven steals. Mm. So if there are 11 turnovers a game, seven of them are steals. That is amazing. That is an amazing stat because those are live ball turnovers in the playoff. And now you see their offensive rebound. Third turnover for Georgetown. Shireman from the corner. Two catch open. and release. Yep, he was wide open and cans it. And a timeout called by Ed Cooley. They really stole that game against Butler the other day at home. And there's an out-of-bounds play. They just throw it right into Colbrenner. Can't get a better shot. Alexander cut off by Brumbaugh. Center from the logo outside for Cockbrenner for three. No good. And Shireman with the rebound and the easy putback. That was athletic. Three minutes and a half, but now they go man to man. So they showed zone and went man. 
Alexander into the paint, got his man off his feet, caught Miller inside, and that's an easy shot for Miller with his left hand. Yeah, Trey Alexander with a screen hook, but they haven't really gotten it to him, as you said, Tom. Alexander, a little hesitation, a little shake and bake underneath, lost control. Ashworth, he got a quick first step and lays it in, and that was too easy. Ashworth. He probably should be coming out because if you get his fourth, he's done for a long time. Good move. Uh, Kalka bucking with great body control at the end for Shireman. Shireman with a good cut there. And, you know, Styles has gotten beat by him a couple of times. That we saw in the first half, got beat him for three. Now he beats him on the cut to the basket. Shireman will go to the free throw line for Creighton's first free throw attempts of the night. And it's good. 35-28. And ball up top looks in. Nothing's there. Stolen away by Alexander. Alexander trying to go to length of the floor. Gets contact off the glass. It's good. It's the largest lead of the night for the Blue Jays. They go to Miller in the corner. Miller gets some separation, some space, and the answer. He cannot leave any That three is no good. It was a good look for Masu. Alexander heading to the basket, and then he lays it in, goes right to the cup, and a timeout called by Ed Cooley. from the floor. Alexander, bounce pass to King, and a two-handed flush. And one thing about King, he's a really good sub for Kalkbrenner, and he's going to be very good himself when Kalkbrenner's going. Three from Trout is too strong. Shireman with another rebound. Shireman trying to get a couple guys off their feet using his strong hand. No good. King with the offensive board. Yeah, that's one that the tumble has to get. Alexander. Oh, boy, beautiful finger roll. King with the board off the miss from Brumball. And Shireman. That's really good basketball right there. Yeah, but that doesn't make it really happy. That was really bad transition defense. They did not run back hard that time. 6.51, green by Cockbrenner, feeds Cockbrenner who lays it in. They do that so well. Shot clock is at eight, Ashworth into the paint, picks it out for Alexander for three, yes! That'll do it. That may be it, yep. 73-67, 25 steps. Ashworth still in there, King, and King is able to lay it in. I'm not going to say that's a slam. It's 60, 15 seconds left. Dotzler is going to dribble this one out. Greg McDermott's going to get to midcourt, wait for his buddy, Ed Cooley. Again, really close friends. Ed leaned on Greg last year when he was making the decision on what to do. And that'll do it. And Greg McDermott with the win tonight. Now moves into a tie with Raleigh Massimino on the Big East all-time all -time wins list with 110. Shireman, well, he finishes with 18 points and 12 rebounds. First win of the year for Creighton in the Big East. They knock off the Georgetown Hoyas. We'll take a break and be back to D.C. we got a lot more to get to including an interview with Greg McDermott right after this. Coach, I know we talked a lot about before the game about these turnovers, and you, I know the work that you've put into it. Your teams don't usually turn it over. You had 11 in the first half, and then the second half got back to doing the things that you do. Yeah, and, and you know, and Coach, some of the ones in the first half were just self-inflicted, you know, and, and uh, you know, guys just <laughs> a half a second later, a count late uh, with the pass, and the help has already gotten there. And we talked about it at halftime. I thought the guys cleaned it up, and then rebounding was the other thing we talked about pregame, and we really dominated that part of the game. That's one area that Georgetown's been really good, and we kept them off the offensive glass. And I thought you did a great job on Dontrez Styles. Yeah, I th Baylor Shireman, I think I thought really stepped up, and you know we didn't we didn't know Epps wasn't going to play till you know right before game time, and it, certainly that changed, uh, you know their offense and what they were trying to look for. That Brumbaugh did some really good things for him, but Baylor was terrific on Styles. But knowing as knowing you as long as I do and how humble you are, I do have to ask this question that you may not want to answer. But how do you feel about tying my mentor Roly Massimino in Big East wins? <laughs> 
I, I didn't I didn't have any idea I was there. I guess that means I'm old. Uh, but uh, obviously, we say watch Coach Massimino's teams play and had tremendous respect for him. But uh, uh, if you hang around long enough, you're you're either going to win some games and break some records, or you're going to get fired. One of the two. And that's I, the truth. I, I've I've been fortunate enough to be at a great place and uh, had a lot of good players uh, the 14 years I've been at Creighton. Coach, good luck. Congratulations. Thanks, Lab.